In Farming Simulator, the in-house .i3d format is used for all 3D models. In order for Blender to export your model to the correct format, you need to install the Giants i3d exporter. Either use the provided installation file or follow the link below the video and go to gdn.giants-software.com. Log in and download the latest version of the exporter. The installation itself is very easy. Simply double click on the installation file and the exporter will be installed automatically. Just follow the instructions on the screen. After the installation, you can open Blender and check in the options menu if the Giants i3D exporter tools are installed and if necessary, activate them. With a click into the layout window and a press on the key N, the possibility to select the button for the Giants i3D exporter opens. At the top of the exporter, you can see the index path. That's the individual value for the arrangement of the selected object within the scene collection in Blender, which is similar to the scene graph in the Giants editor, along with the corresponding name or node name to the right. Directly in the line below is the checkbox for the node identification, node ID for short, which will later be important for our i3D mapping. If we change the name in the scene collection, we have to update the name manually by clicking on Use Node Name if the node ID was activated before. One line further down, we can find four tabs, Export, Attributes, Tools, and Shader with further subfunctions. In the Export tab, we see Export Options with selectable sub-items, which we can select if we want to export created animations, models, lights, and so forth to our point i3d file. Within shape export subparts, it is possible to deselect individual elements of the 3D model so that they are not exported. The last selection boxes we see are in the miscellaneous section. The selection axis orientation is important for Blender. This is set to bake transforms by default, and that's a good thing. Because with that value, the Y and Z axis are swapped during export. In Blender, we have the problem that the vertical axis is set to Z. But in the Giants editor, we need the Y axis as the vertical axis. If we select Keep Transforms, we get the same Y value in the Giants editor as in Blender. But in Blender, we would have to work 90 degrees rotated. And for simplicity, we leave it on Bake Transforms. In the following section, we can find Game Location, where we specify the installation path to the game. This is important in case we want to load shaders or similar directly from the game. The XML configuration file is our so-called Vehicle XML, which we would specify so that we can later export the i3D mapping directly from Blender. With the Vehicle XML, we can later assign functions to the mod with nodes and tags. As soon as we need a vehicle XML, it will be available in our files. Last but not least, we need to specify the path for our i3D file. We can either take the name and location of our Blender file right here, or choose our own folder. If we navigate to the Attributes tab, we see many elements which can be found almost one-to-one -one in the Giants editor. Within this area, we can assign different game-specific properties to single objects before we export them. During the tutorials, we will see this area frequently, so we will talk about it in more detail later. In the Tools tab, we can find small scripts to help us in-game more easily. With Align Y-Axis, it is possible to align the Y-Axis from the origin point in the direction of another object's origin. In the Shader section, we have to enter the path to our Shader folder. We can do this automatically with a click on Set. After the folder has been successfully loaded, we can select our shaders individually and then add them to our model or material by clicking on Add Shader at the bottom. In the course of the tutorials, we will come back to this and use everything in detail.